Today we're going to be talking about the Mafex and Medicom Shin Ultraman Deluxe Edition figure. And golly, would you look at this box. Not only is it just vastly larger than the original release's box, but oh, the powdery gray box with the blue sky for the backing card, the open window so you can see the figure and all of its accessories right out in front. This thing is beautiful. This thing's a work of art in and of itself. I'm gonna give it three solid stars. Look at it. It inspires high fantasy wonderment. And right out of that beautiful, beautiful box, Shin Ultraman will be standing over six inches tall. Paint and detail wise, as far as the figure goes, it's a little bit of the same of what we've seen multitudes of times. Red and silver and a random either paint application or material difference for the eye. Got the little switch in Ultraman's ear to activate the lights in the mask. Simple yet easy to spot details on the back and on the torso for abs and pectorals. And what else can I possibly say? It's all finely done here. It's impressive with how well it's done. It's a little bit of the same because we've been seeing this since Shin Ultraman first started its whole marketing snafu. It's good. It's lovely. It's rather ultra. The hands are going to have some nice details on them, on both sides. The ultra feet are going to have details on the bottom of them. And now I guess we can move into the accessory inclusion. And I'm just going to state this right now. Solid star because you get a lot. The original release came with all this. Four pairs of hands, a stand, and a whole bunch of accessories for that stand. But with the deluxe edition, we get all this and a pair of hands, then another pair of hands, a spacium beam, a giant fuck off spacium beam, an evil Shin Ultraman head, a pair of evil Shin Ultraman hands, and I guess a pair of evil Shin Ultraman J's, as well as a beta capsule holding hand, and that very same beta capsule with, oh my god, look at those pink details, it's so small and perfect. A dedicated stand to not only support the spacium beam attachments, but also the ultra slash attachment, as well as not just one ultra slash effect, but two. One where it's attached to his hand, and the other where it's on a stand. Now, most of what you just saw there is going to be exactly what you expect. Silver hands are going to be silver hands with their different assortments of details. But I would like to take a closer look at the beams, the Ultra Slash, the Evil Ultraman head, and even the Ultraman Tims, because those differ from the Tims that come packaged and attached to that of Shin Ultraman. Evil Shin Ultraman head. Little bit of the same of what we got with the standard Shin Ultraman head, save for the eyes. They're a little bit more crudely misshapen. As you can see here, Shin Ultraman has those big hopeful eyes, and evil Shin Ultraman has those angular and evil-ish eyes. I feel like evil Shin Ultraman's head is a bit rounder. Maybe it's because the eyes are smaller, but yeah. There you go. Here are the evil Shin Ultraman Tims, and there is the major difference between that and the standard Shin Ultraman Tims. We're going to have a different design on the bottom. As you can see in comparison, did that really need to be included? No, but Mafex and Medicom Toy did. So, appreciate it. I really can't tell any other major differences. Maybe these feet are a bit bigger, but right off the bat, it's the designs on the bottom. Moving on. First up, the Ultra Slash effect. I really do like how the paint was mostly focused around the center over here, leaving the edges to be somewhat translucent, as you can see. The detail of that of the hand that is attached is rather nice. As for the Ultra Slash effect that is attached to its little stand over here, it's gonna be a little bit of the same. I feel like the paint over here comes off a little bit more blue than the other one does. I mean, in comparison, oh yeah, this definitely has a little bit more blue to it, I think. That's what I'm seeing. Am I crazy? And there we have it on the opposite sides in comparison. And I just say I really like how this was done. Got a nice little please be gentle with me ball joint over here so it can really go whatever which way. And then we're gonna get another one over here. Good show there, Mafex. I like it. I like it a lot. Look at that baby shine. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And now for the spacium beams, they will be attached to the hands, so you don't gotta worry about pegging anything in or anything like that, save for, you know, just the hand. The detailing on the hands are nice as per usual, but I really like the simplicity of the beams themselves. We've got those jagged little lines in there, a little bit of blue paint on top, and what I really love about these beams is just that 
They have no end. They're uneven right at the end. They're mid-shot with these. And as I'm sure you could probably already tell, this is indeed translucent, and it really helps that blue shine. The same can essentially be said for the longer spacium beam effect over here. Same details, same blue paint, same translucency as you can see, same hand right at the end. It's simple, it's not short, sweet, and to the point, but in its simplicity it's rather short, sweet and to the point. Still really love that the ends of these are uneven like that. And now just a closer look at the beta capsule. I love that the button over here is actually raised so when you get it in the beta capsule holding hand, the thumb will rest right on that button. Let's just go with a short demonstration here. Just uh, get that in there. And there you go. The thumb will be right on the button. It's a tiny, minute little detail, but I really do love that Mayfex went the extra mile for that. Thank you, Mayfex. Now, when it comes to changing the hands and the feet, it, it's, it's on a peg. You just pull and then you push. You're all good. But I did want to showcase how to change the heads because it left me a little bewildered. Not so much in the action, but yeah. I thought this thing was broken the first time I ripped the head off, but it turns out that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Always make sure this little peg joint has the Adam's apple moving out. That way, when you put the alternate head on, boom. Boom. Oh yeah, nice and angular. And now for the sake of sakes, Shin Ultraman will be evil Shin Ultraman for the rest of this review. Rip, slip, brush. Oh. oh. Yeah, the feet are a bit of a pain in the butt. And there we go, evil Shin Ultraman. And here we are, time to show you how the stands work. If you have your Shin Ultraman figure posed with that of the spacium beam, either the long one or the short one, and you wanna stand, here you go. This little part moves up and down and comes off. All you need to do to get that little thing right on under the beam, just like so, and bam, you're going to have support. Oh, he fucking it up, bro, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want it to look like he just threw the ultra slash, all you gotta do is this. Take that piece off, and then gently put this piece on, pose it how you wish, boom. Looks like he threw it. A solid star in terms of paint and detail. Like I said, solid star in terms of accessory inclusion and a sub rating of another solid star because let's talk price. The original release of the Mayfection Ultraman was about 50 bucks as pictured here. It's actually currently on sale despite being backordered. So when it comes to this one, clearly it's gotta be like, I don't know, 80, $90, no. This very same figure, whose major differences is mostly just accessories it seems, maybe the paint, Maybe the eye color, who knows? $66, and it is currently still in stock on HLJ and on sale, and this, once again, is how you do a deluxe reissue of a figure. You're not paying that much more in comparison to the original, and you're getting more. You get a lovely box on top of it, and you essentially have two different ways to display this figure, both as the evil Shin Ultraman or the normal Shin Ultraman. So now let's take a look at articulation. As you saw, there will be a ball joint at the head over here, can look up that far and then down that far. Rotationals, yes. There will also be a ball joint at the base of the neck over here, which will aid you in posing. I mean, looking up that far. Yes, it looks like Evil Shin Ultraman is asking Zoffy to kill Peter Parker, but we're not doing that today. Can look all the way down just like that. And again, side to side, he's cracking his neck. It's a typical shonen anime uh, villain trope thing. The arms with the help of these butterfly joints will be able to move in and out like so. We will also get a full rotation at the shoulder blade over here as well as a moving out feature and a moving back in. Bicep swiveler, double bend at the elbow, Ooh. swivel at the wrist, bend down, Bend up. Evil Shin Ultraman Rafflecopter ball joint at the top of the torso. Evil Shin Ultraman Rafflecopter ball joint at the waist. Can look back about that far, my word. And can look down about that far, my word. And yes, we can turn from side to side and all that other stuff. I'm pretty sure it could do a full rotation. Let's see. Rafflecopter, there we go. Dare I even try the waist? Yep. Look at that. Fantastic. And now with the legs. Pull one. Pull two, more movement. Legs can move out about that far, rather nice. They can kick forward 
rather far and high. It can kick back pretty decently, even without the presence of some ultra cheeks. Yeah, his lower portion over here is gonna be a nice rubbery material, so you will be able to get a good kick back. Not bad. Would have preferred more ultra cheeks though. We will get a bit of a swivel over here at the thigh. Double bend at the knee. The feet can point up about that far and then down about that far. How elegant. We'll get a nice pivot at the ankle over here. Oh yes. And we'll get a toe bend. Beautiful. I'm going to give articulation a solid star. Now let's take a look at posability. Posability wise, this guy looks and operates a lot like the SH Figuart Shin Ultraman, but with all of the added accessories that aren't just hands this go around, obviously comes out as the more superior release of the two. Plus it's also just a bit bigger and the red isn't as muted. Mafex absolutely slapped this one right out of the park. And this figure has been very, very hard to put down since acquiring it a couple of weeks ago. Right on Mafex. Effects. Oh yeah, super solid star for that. Size comparisons, Mega Movie Monster Series Shin Ultraman and CCP Shin Ultraman. Movie Monster Series Shin Ultraman, both meme stand and the Spacium pose. Mega House Shin Ultraman Mystery Minis. Mega House Shin Ultraman Mystery Minis. Bandai Ultra Action Shin Ultraman. SH Figuart Shin Ultraman. Look at that size difference. Look at the difference in the reds. <laughs> Movie Monster Series Shin Naranga. Movie Monster Series Shin Gabora. And Presto Ultraman Tiga, multi-type. Limited Movie Monster Series Coconut Supreme Swirl Gamera. Imperial Goji. <laughs> <laughs> for what you pay for and what you get, I would definitely call this an absolute must. Link in the pinned comment down below. I know Shin Ultraman's time in the cinemas and basically in the public eye is done. But just the fact that we're still getting some lovely figures of Shin Ultraman and the characters from that is just beautiful. Mafex, SH Figure Arts, please, Shin Gomez, when. I have been Shin Rob Jura, I do so hope you all enjoyed, and when next we meet, Rodan. That. Please be sure to check out all my social media, including my Patreon, where for a dollar a month you get videos like this early. Very early. And seeing as how I have all those Playmates figures coming in, which might happen before this or after this, yeah, some of these videos are going to be available to you long before they hit public viewpoints. I will see you all next time. Have yourselves a lovely day, afternoon, and night. Peace. Bye. I want you to kill Peter Parker. You stupid!